In the last lecture, we had an example of a broken access control bug or vulnerability that allowed us to literally gain access to the admin panel by modifying the cookies. But as mentioned earlier, broken access control is a term that covers a large number of vulnerabilities. Any vulnerability that allows us to access or modify data that does not belong to us is considered a broken access control vulnerability. So another really good way of testing these kind of vulnerabilities is to create two accounts on the target website, have different information for these accounts. So I have different names, different emails and different addresses, for example, whatever information it asks for, just submit different information. And then we're going to log in as one of these accounts and see while I'm logged in as James Bond, for example, can I access the name of a different account or their email or their address? If I can, and if the website is designed to not share this information, for example, some blog websites do share on purpose the names of their authors. But let's say, for example, if I'm able to access their email or their address from another account, then that means I am able to access information that does not belong to me. And therefore, it means that I discovered a broken access control vulnerability or bug. Let me show you this in a nice example. I'm going to share its link in the resources. And as usual, you want to test everything within the website. And once done, we're going to create two accounts. And like I said, we do this for two purposes. First is that you'll be able to test more functionality such as comments and reviews and so on. And second, you'll be able to test for broken access control. Now, because this is a test website similar to the previous one, you can't create accounts, but you can log in with the following credentials. So we're going to copy and paste it in here to log in. And perfect. Now that I'm logged in, you can see that it's giving me my username and a certain API key, which belongs to me only. And I also have an extra feature to update my email. Like I said, this is very useful. Usually when you log in, you get more features to test on the target website. So therefore, you'd want to go home and start looking for new features that are only available to you as a user and test them for bugs and vulnerabilities. Now, if you view a post in here, you can see we have a user called Carlos. Now, if I click on Carlos, it's going to give me the blog posts written by him. And if you look closely to the URL in here, you'll see that we have his user ID. If you see this in a target website, you should make a note of it. I'm going to copy it, however, because I know this is going to be useful. And if you go back to your account, you'll notice that on the top, you're accessing a path or an endpoint that is called my account. And you're passing a value of an ID to it. This ID is probably your own ID and it's different from Carlos's ID that we just copied. So let's see what happens if we paste the ID of Carlos. We hit enter and perfect. Right now it's telling us that our username is Carlos and our API key is this. So we're able to access Carlos's API key. So because we're able to access information that belong to another user, that means we discovered a broken access control bug or vulnerability. This is a valid bug that you should submit if you're hunting for bugs and you should definitely include it in your report if you're pen testing. Now, depending on your target, you might not be able to guess this ID or get it from a blog post. Therefore, it is really useful to follow this methodology where you create two accounts and then because this account belongs to you, you know its ID and you can log in from this account and try to access the data that belongs to this account using this guy's ID. Another way of doing this is to simply guess it. So there is another example in here. I'm going to share it in the resources as usual. And in this example, let's log in first. Same username and password. And this time, there is nowhere for you in the home directory to find other users on the same page. Therefore, you'll either have to create another user yourself and see if you can access its information, or you're going to have to guess another username. So this time in the account ID, you're actually not getting an ID, you're getting an actual username. So a really good username to guess is admin, for example. And 
that looks like it doesn't work because it brought us back to the login page. So maybe we should try administrator. And perfect, as you can see that worked. And it's also showing us the password this time. Now this password appears like it's actually hashed, but you can very easily see it by inspecting the code that is responsible for rendering this part of the page. Regardless of the language that the target application is written in at the backend side, whether it's written in Python, Java, Ruby, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, everything will have to be rendered as HTML because browsers can only interpret HTML and JavaScript. So everything will have to be rendered in a text-based format that the browser is able to understand and show you here as elements. Therefore, you can right click any element that you see on the page and click on inspect to see the HTML code that is responsible for rendering this element. So as you can see, if I highlight the password in here, it gets highlighted on the top. If I highlight the label for the password, it gets highlighted on the top. If I highlight the input box for the password in here, it's getting highlighted on the top because this is the HTML code that is responsible for rendering this element, for displaying this element. And you can see in here, we actually have a value parameter that is specifying the password. So this is actually the password in plain text. So even though it seems like the password is invisible in here, you can easily see it in here by inspecting the element. And now you can simply copy this and then go to the admin page. So we're going to log out, go to the admin page. I'm assuming there is an admin page and actually just log in with the username administrator and the password that I just copied. I'm going to close this and log in. And perfect. As you can see now we are logged in as admin. We can go to the admin panel and delete users or use any functionality that is only available to the admin. 